absolutely there were rooms um, specially designed for torture. The basement had uh, acid baths. It had uh, furnaces. Holmes knew that he could murder as many people, as many as these tourists who weren't from Chicago, as he wanted to, as long as he had a factory to dispose of the human waste afterwards. And that's what he did in that basement. He created rooms that he could uh, restrain live uh, live victims uh, for months if he wanted to experiment on them or take the dead ones down from uh, from the rooms. There were special rooms that had gas so that he could asphyxiate them in their sleep and then send them down chutes into the basement where his assistants would strap them to gurneys and he would operate, uh, conducting experiments on their brains, on their hearts, on their organs. Uh, when he was done, the ones that had the best quality skeletons he would sell to the universities, the medical schools around the United States. first one um, actually was posted in the Metro, a website Metro. The dark triangular object caught on camera over Texas is thought to be a classified Military plane. Now, the video of this is posted again onto the uh, the Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash the Invisible World Show. I'm going to read the whole thing here, but the grainy images show a uh, dark triangular craft in the skies. It's, it's a video. It's right there. There's a dark triangular craft in the skies over Amarillo, and it's leaving a set of white contrails behind it for all you uh, contrail fans out there. Uh, fans, that's a weird, weird way of putting it. Uh, one of the pictures was taken by UFO enthusiast Steve Douglas, and was also he also picked up accompanying radio chatter, suggesting that the object was manned. Now, the second uh, black and white picture of the aircraft, multiple different people saw this thing, uh, was taken by Dean Musket, said Aviation Week's Bill Sweetman. He's quoted in this article, this one article, uh, saying classified programs have been exposed in all sorts of ways. For example, the A-12 Blackbird was disclosed under a degree of pressure. It's not merely logical to expect that numerous classified aircraft program uh, exist. It's almost a necessity. Okay, guys, um, uh, we're live on Hell's Bells Radio. Um, and uh, Terry popped in. We've got, a, we've got a question from the Twitter audience for Robin. And um, I was, was going to mention this as well, and I've, I've been following this story um, about this Malaysian aircraft. And, Robin, I know you've probably been asked this by, by people, but can you give our listeners your thoughts on this, uh, this very strange set of circumstances? Yes, I'm so glad that I've been asked about that. And, uh, you know, I wrote something two years ago, and this past year in 2013 as well, you can look on Facebook under my name, and I wrote many notes, and these are my uh, annual predictions that I wrote. So 20, 2011, 2012, 2013, all mentions about these things happening. And so, uh, you know, we're going to get to another question that, that you were going to ask me to, and uh, that points towards the notes. But this particular aircraft, I said from day one, in fact, the moment that I first heard it was the path that it took. And so I saw it flying north and then taking a sharp left to the west. And then, of course, a couple of days later, they confirmed that to us in the public. They may have already known, you know? Well, if... You know, we're absolutely positively dealing with possession, and there's no question about it. After all the psychologicals, after all the evaluations have been done, then, then you have to review the case in, in its entirety one more time to make sure that you're not missing anything. Uh, once that is done, then what exactly, you have to know exactly what's occurring to the person, to the possessed. Well, for, you have to know, are you dealing, for example, are you dealing with um, a demonic entity whose intent it is for full possession or transient possession. You have to know if you're dealing with an incubus or succubus. And so each one of those are going to be completely different. Plus, you have to be very careful about the person who is, who is, who is possessed. Because the fact is, is, you know, the person who is possessed can easily lose their life. I'll introduce you to our first artist on our first show here today. 
This band is called Red Letter Statement. They happen to hail from a sister city to the one I live in called Rochester, New York, about an hour and a half east of Buffalo. Red Letter Statement is an alternative rock band formed in 2007. Bands they may be most closely compared to are bands such as Taking Back Sunday, Thrice, Thursday, Census Fail, and Brand New. Uh, the band's been playing all sorts of circuits for many years. They've played with bands such as Story of the Year, Bad Rabbits, Such Gold, Andrew W.K., and Aaron Gillespie, as, long as, as well as the band Night Versus. The band says their purpose is to write music that helps people get through the hard times and enjoy the good times. I have a real problem with the last, I would say, 15 to 20 minutes of the movie. Where he decides he's going to perform the exorcism and everything. No, I just really was disappointed in the whole let's all go the exorcist route. Yeah. Like, to me, that was a cop-out. The very least they could have done was kept the sheet over her. Because it was like, oh, and look, it's Reagan from The Exorcist. It was just, it just, it ruined a perfectly good movie. The movie, in my opinion, the movie was wonderful up Mm. until the last 20 minutes. And then it just totally went south. It became a cheesy, you know, oh, let's have a demon with green stuff and her head turns around. And I was like, really? That that was just so, had they kept her face under the sheet and not shown us anything? Yeah. Because the whole movie, the reason it was so scary was because they really didn't show you anything. 